Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Rachel and in today's video I'm going to be talking about three novellas I've read recently that are all just over a hundred pages but all three really pack a punch. There is such an art to writing short stories and novellas and using words concisely and impactfully and I really enjoyed all three of these books and I thought I would share them with you. All three of these books are translated works and if you read the original language I would absolutely recommend reading books in the original language generally as sometimes translations can be a little bit off or lose some of the descriptive qualities or cultural references. First up is The Most Precious of Cargoes, A Fable of the Holocaust by Jean-Claude Grumberg. This was translated from French by Frank Wine. This book is essentially, yes, a fable. It is written in a very lyrical, folklore, fairy tale type of way. It is about a couple, the woodcutter and the woodcutter's wife, who live in extreme poverty during World War II. The woodcutter's wife desperately wants to be a mother, but they haven't been able to have any children. And every day when she goes out into the woods to collect sticks and branches for firewood, she watches a train go by and she fantasizes about where the passengers on this train might be going. Little does she know that this train is actually used by the Nazis to transport Jewish people to concentration camps and is also used as a sort of death chamber um, where many of the Jewish people who embark on the train do not get off alive. As readers, we find out a little bit about one of the families that is on this train and this extreme act of love that a father decides to attempt to give one of his children the chance at life. Um, I won't say anything further on that, but the story is really about overcoming prejudice and racism through loving a child and that even in the darkest periods of human history we have these stories of extreme love and how people survive and they are resilient and loving and are able to continue on. Um, this story was really beautiful and I was amazed how much was packed into, I think this one was the shortest, at 96 pages. And I can only imagine how much better it flows in French, but I really, really enjoyed the story. It was very moving, very haunting, and I highly recommend reading this. The second novel is The Guest Cat. This cover is so cute. The Guest Cat by Takashi Hirady. This was translated from Japanese by Eric Saland. And this story is about a cat, <laughs> to nobody's surprise. But not only about a cat, it is a very intimate story about everyday life. It is about a couple in their 30s. The woman is a copyright and the man is an editor who would like to go more into writing and just about their home life. I really enjoyed the writing style of this book. It was very descriptive. You could picture the window they were looking out of or the tree growing outside in their backyard. It is about this outdoor cat who comes to adopt the couple as its second owners and will just come every single day expecting to be fed, to be looked after, and just this really nice story between the couple and the cat. I always love inclusions of animal people relationships and stories. For many of us, loving our pets or just loving animals in general is such a big part of our daily life and is often not included in books, so I really enjoy when it is such a vital element of a story. Last up is another Japanese translation. I mentioned this book in another video and that is Kitchen by Banana Yoshimoto. This was translated by Megan Backus. This story is about a young woman who has lost all of her family members and feels very, very alone in the world, but she's taken in by a boy that she doesn't know very well, but worked at a flower shop which her grandmother regularly frequented and his mother 
So the three of them have a very unusual living arrangement where they don't really see each other that often because they all have very different schedules, but they coexist very well together and they form their own sort of family. Food and cooking is a big love language in this book and I like how a lot of the conversations and intimate exchanges happened over a meal. Okay, sorry if... Uh... The frame changed a little bit, my camera died. <laughs> but anyway, this book actually includes the novella Kitchen as well as the short story Moonlight Shadow. Both Kitchen and Moonlight Shadow really focus on the fragility of life and how fleeting it can be. And they both also focus on how important relationships are and how important it is to heal and move forward. I really enjoyed both of these stories and they had me like snuggling the dogs a little bit closer because life is short. I do feel that I need to mention that this book was published in the 80s um, and some of the language used to describe trans characters is questionable at the best, offensive at the worst. The boy's mother who takes in our main character in Kitchen is transgender. Sometimes the way the mother's son and the girl they take in speak about the mother is um, sort of joking about the transition. However, they do accept the mother. So it's kind of a weird situation of a son just joking about their parent but it could also be quite sensitive or hurtful for somebody to read. There's also violence against trans women characters, so that's just something to take into account. Um, but it is really tied closely into the experience of loss that is so important to this story. Those are the three novellas that I've read recently that really spoke to me. Even though they are barely a hundred pages, they really were impactful and I think they would make great gifts or just a great book to pick up and have on your shelf because it is so important. Again, if you read French or Japanese, I would definitely recommend reading these in their original language, but in English they are still very beautiful and moving. Thank you so much for watching. Let me know if you like to read novellas and which ones you've really enjoyed. See you soon. Bye!